Hey guys, JT Tran here. Now, today I'm bringing back Isabel because she did such a great interview on how to be successful in Hollywood as an Asian American. So, that was more mainstream and I, now I want to talk about dating, but because Isabel is, in case you didn't know, Asian herself, let's talk about something a little bit controversial. And I'm sure every Asian guy has kind of gone through this period or asked himself, why do so many white guys like Asian girls or like why are so many Asian girls dating white guys? Because I went through that period in college where I was like that angry Asian man because all I saw were like white guys with Asian girls. And I actually had one girl tell me who was Asian that she would not date like Asian guys. Like, like, what's the perspective? Like, you dated white guys, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've dated pretty much everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Equal opportunity dater. I, I like that. It's like Costco, sample with some Um In my opinion, I don't think there's like one reason as to why, let's say, an Asian girl would date a white guy and then vice versa. But I think everybody has their own motivations. Okay. Um, some girls I've met where you said, like, they're like, I only date white guys. And, and they have to make it known. <laughs> That's, I like, hit that. And it's not like, it's not like casual. It's like, you gotta make sure yeah. you know it. Just so you know, on the table. And I, it pisses me off as an Asian woman. Yeah. I'm like, lady, I don't want the rest of the world to think that this is what we think and what we say, mm. what we bring, bring up. Um, I think those girls, I mean, there's nothing wrong with dating everybody. You know, if you want to date, if you have a Give yourself the option. Sure, if you have a certain preference, I get it. You know, some people like tall guys, some people like short guys, I don't know. Um, but sometimes when they make it known like that, I feel like it comes from a different place. It's not right. a preference thing sometimes. I almost feel like it comes from a, um, and maybe it's a strong way to say it, but self-hatred. Like the internalized racism. It is internalized racism. And a lot of people are scared to use the R word, but it's okay to use it because I feel like they're not comfortable with themselves for whatever mm -hmm. reason. Maybe they were just all always around um, white people, or maybe they didn't have a lot of exposure to Asian people, or whatever it is. There's something there that's that's a disconnect, and so they find more solace and comfort in dating somebody that is not them because right. they aren't they aren't comfortable with who they are. Right. I mean, a large part of it obviously has to do with stereotypes in Hollywood as well as the period of colonialism and you know Vietnam being colonized sure. by France and there's, there's a lot that goes into it um, at the same token though I have met girls who would say the opposite where they're like I only date Asian guys I would never date a white guy I only <laughs> I would only date Asian guys and I thought that was kind of interesting too like these are Asian girls saying that these are or white Asian girls, girls. Okay. these are Asian girls saying I only date Asian guys I would never date a white guy so I've also heard that on that not as much as the other one mm -hmm. but I do hear it and and their reasoning is actually pretty interesting too it's the other side just would never get me right. they don't understand where I come from they don't understand my background they just don't get it there's still a disconnect between both cultures so I find that really interesting and and what I found is if you say that you would never date an Asian guy you will marry an Asian guy <laughs> if you say that you would never date a white guy you will marry a white guy I <laughs> I, 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 my experience with my own girlfriends, I've been seeing it happening. Like, uh, it's so funny. Like, I have one girl who used to be my roommate, and she was like, I would never date a white guy. And she's Asian. I would never date a white guy. She's like, well on her way being engaged to a white guy. Interesting. So I didn't, I haven't seen that. But, um, but to your point of having this sort of uh, polarity between two groups, what I've seen over time, and kind of the statistics show this, like, Back in the, like the the 90s and the early aughts, where there was a huge kind of outmarriage rate. I think what statistically is like Asian women are three times more likely to outmarry than other groups of women. Oh, um, really? Yeah, it's pretty insane. And again, this has kind of led to the rise of what I do is because there's this sort of like uh, bitterness and anger. Like some of the most popular websites were dedicated to being like that angry Asian man. Sure. Um, but over time, and you see this with OK Cupid because you know I, I studied online dating. Where back in like the 2000s, uh, the preference of online dating for Asian women to Asian men was like 8%, mm. right? Which was like half the rate of like a white woman to a white guy. And this is like early, so like, you know, due to whatever preferences the media, um, Asian women didn't have that strong of a preference. But there was the, the Pew Research study uh, lately has shown that that trend has kind of reversed. Not entirely there's still like a huge number of Asian girls that will only date white guys 
um, but it's become more even. And the OkCupid study, if you looked in the early aughts to more like 2012, it went from like 8% to like 14%. I forget the exact number, but you could see an increase. And I think it is because um, I think Asian Americans, we've, you know, have uh, the more millennial age has, you know, hopefully gotten a bit more sure of our ethnic identity. Yes, absolutely. I, I definitely think there's a more certainty and a surety of it for sure. I mean, the 90s was a completely different era. No. Right? It was a completely different time. And even when you watch it from Fresh Off the Boat, you see that. Mm -hmm. And um, I think nowadays, it's not even being about Asian Americans, it's just being about straight up American. Yeah. I think that's what it is. Um, and I think, uh, I don't know, it's, it's not even so much about being Asian Americans, just being Americans about being diverse, it's 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 a new era nowadays. Yeah. You know, you have more access to being online and finding out information, connecting with another person, and even if you want to find out more about this culture or this other person, you can you have that at your hands now. Not like back in the day where you know if you were in Nebraska, that was it. You know, yeah. and if you're, you know what I mean, like you kind of just stuck there. You're just there. Well. One thing I'll get, and now kind of we're kind of flipping, uh, reversing here, is they say, well, JT, you're teaching Asian guys how to date white women. Isn't that the exact same thing? Mm -hmm. But m my counter to that is I'm trying to humanize both Asian men to white women and black women, and humanizing like all the all the women out there to what Asian men are capable of. Because I've been to some of these colleges, and I've spoken at some of these colleges. Like you could put a gun to some of these their heads, and some of them could not, literally could not go up to a white girl black girl and ask them out. They're just not capable of it. And again, a lot of that has to do with like Hollywood and media stereotypes, but also a lot of them are from China and they've never even thought of that. So to them, the idea of going out with someone of a different race is bizarre. They've never even thought of that. Right. Or maybe they just thought they couldn't. But also on the other hand, like I'll hear white girls be like, well, no, I've never dated any Asian guys. Like, why? It's like, well, no one's ever asked me out. Yes. Not a single Asian guy has asked me out. Yeah. I saw your video where the girl went around and, and tried asking the guys and they Duh. just kind of like scurried away. Um, I think that's kind of interesting because uh, I think if you're from, like, say, China, mm -hmm. I mean, if you think about it, numbers wise, it's, there's not very many girls. Even no. just Asian girls, right? Just even just Chinese. No, actually, I'm sorry. Yeah, because they're so, you know, they had the one child policy, so. Yeah, there's 20, they said 24 missing um, Chinese women. Uh, and that's just in China. That's not even talking about like, I think, was it 800,000 in, in Vietnam? Oh. There's, there's literally a gender imbalance where yeah. there's way too many men and not enough women to go around. So I think it is about showing just every woman, um, black, white, Latina, that Asian guys are confident and will date you and also vice versa by showing Asian guys that you can't be with these girls, they're not horrible to talk to. They're not gonna shoot you down yeah. just because you're Asian, although some will, let's be honest, they're racist. I think girl, what guys need to know about girls is we're always gonna be nice, generally. Yeah. Like I'd say 90% we're nice. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you said the shittiest, douchiest thing, we're still gonna be effing nice to your face. Yeah. Maybe inside we'll feel differently, but just you know, by face value, like we're we're gonna still smile and be nice because I almost feel like as a woman, I hate to say it, we're almost kind of conditioned through life. Yeah, that. this is as kind of etiquette. Yeah, right? it is an etiquette, and and don't like women are more willing to say yes than you think. Yeah. You know? uh, all okay, right, so we've like hammered this subject uh, pretty raw. Um, what would you say to both like an Asian girl, she meets a, a white guy and says, oh, I only date Asians. Like you, you've had that before, right? Like he's got that, that yellow fever Asian fetish. Yeah. Um, what do I say to the, the white, <laughs> Wait, girls, <if> <laughs> white girls who have an Asian fetish? No, 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 like the, the Asian girls. The they Asian girls like, you know. who have, oh, Asian girls have the white, white guy fetish. Okay. <laughs> I say, I would tell them, just so you know, I have friends and they said the same exact thing and they are married and happy with an Asian guy. Mm. Just saying. <laughs> just saying. Um, I, I don't, you know, for me, I don't want to pick at it too much. I think, like, let them experience mm -hmm. it. You know, if that's, if that's what makes them happy, let them be. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I kind of try to read people, like, how how deep can we get into this conversation? Because it is it does go deeper with race. Mm -hmm. It does go deeper with your culture. Um, I mean, I, I want to share the story, and I I, I hope it's not too obvious who it is. <laughs> so I'm not going to say names. But um, my girlfriend, she had this other friend, and um, when when I first met this girl, she's Asian. She had to straight up show, tell me, my boyfriend, that. 
know, her ex-boyfriend was white. And it was just threw that out there. Just threw it out there. It kind of came out of nowhere, you know, just like, oh, okay, cool. Um, and then, you know, turns out she only dates white guys. Mm. Um, her sister is a hairstylist. Okay. Okay. And she married a white guy. Now, her sister is actually from Asia. And she, is, uh, she dyed her hair blonde. She has never had black hair. She's dyed her <laughs> hair blonde. She wears blue contacts. And I know girls like this. Yeah. I know Asian girls like this. I've met them. And sometimes it's fashionably cool. Well. Right? But other girls do it because they are not comfortable with their own skin. Mm -hmm. You know, there are girls who do do it for that. And her two kids, she dyes their hair blonde. Oh. Their hair isn't even naturally, like, the dad's side doesn't wow. have any blonde family members. But she dyes the two kids' hair to make him look more white, that's... It is so, and, and the dad is so oblivious to it, and he, it's just... That's just, God, that's going to be brutal growing I don't up. I'm trouble, because I hope that person isn't watching this, actually. I do want you to get views, but I hope that person doesn't watch me like, <laughs> but That's hey, going to be brutal. That's going to be just for the brutal. kids growing up, because their identity is going to be so confusing. Exactly, and it's that kind of, those are the people that, that we're talking about. The yeah. people who are like, oh, I only date. This, I want to date white people. And those are the people where it's like deep down inside, just for some reason, along the line, they were made uncomfortable with who they yeah. are. And that's really sad. And, and that, that has real world effects, not to get all depressing, but I, I read a study that Korean Swedish, uh, Korean adoptees have the highest suicide rate. And that's because they're, they're adopted by this white family and then leave, live in Sweden mm. and they are not treated like they're white. And so this, this complete dichotomy, they don't understand, they don't know how to, to, to deal with it. Um, and so they apparently have like the highest like Asian suicide rate. Wow. So there's real consequences when you are not in tune um, with who you are. I definitely think if you have such a strong preference for a certain ethnicity race that you have to be with, I think you kind of have to look into yourself and explore that idea a little bit more, reflect upon why is it that I feel this way? And I think you'll find a little bit more answers. And that also goes with my Asian students because I'll hear that. They'll be like, I'll be like, okay, approach this girl or approach this girl. And I'll be like, oh, I approach that black girl. And I've had this many times like, no, I don't want to talk to black girls. Like, why not? It's like, I only white, like white girls. And I'm like, I want you to approach her no matter what because she's still a woman and like exactly. attraction is attraction. Exactly. And I'll, I'll talk about like how if you think like white girls are at the top, you're still buying into that frame of like that white hierarchy of power. Yeah. Yes. Like you're even as a guy, like y yes, I teach guys how to, Asian guys how to pick up white girls and any girl, but that's that's opening up your dating options because it was denied to us before. It's not fair if people treat us with stereotypes and racism. It's not fair for us to do that to other women. Exactly. Don't put them on a pedestal just because she's a white girl. You don't put her. Yeah, you don't put on a pedestal, but you also don't need to be that asshole that puts women down either. Like that's what I meant by humanizing. You're putting each, like yourself as a man and her as a woman, regardless of race, on the same level. Mm -hmm. She's not above, but she's not below. Mm -hmm. um, so finally. What would you say to an Asian guy, to any of your Asian guy friends, no. who, and they have some girl that says, I would never date an Asian guy. I would never date an Asian guy. Because that's harsh to me. That was like, the you know, first time it happened, I'm like a teen. I'm like, what? You don't know until you try. You don't know you until don't you try. <laughs> Just, I mean, like, actually, I feel like a lot of girls are starting to love. Like, I hear it more, no. where they love to date Asian guys. Mm -hmm. It's slowly happening. It's slowly happening. I think they bring a completely different set of characteristics. Maybe that's from their upbringing, you know? No. But um, Asian guys, you have the Asian guys with swag. You have no. the Asian guys who are like the, the mama, mama's boys who will cook and clean and do everything. <laughs> so you got a whole range of things. Yeah, you get through your b-ballers. Um, you know, it's like I always say, once you go Asian, you can't go Caucasian. Once you go yellow, <laughs> hello. <laughs> yeah, rice is nice. I think I've heard that one. <laughs> I've heard that one. <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, this has been a great discussion. I know it's like kind of skirting around a little bit of controversy, but it's one something. Thing, yeah. Actually, and I think this is kind of interesting. So my boyfriend, he's actually Cambodian. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and and. We were hashtag the dating couple and the amazing race and everything. We're all, we've been together for three years. We're so happy. He's definitely the one. I definitely want to be with him. Nice. We were actually friends for eight years. Wow. So he was in the friend zone for the longest time. <laughs> Don't give up. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll do another video about how to get out of the friend zone. Maybe we'll do that. We should bring him 
actually. It's like, what were you seeing? Yeah, <laughs> very cool. All right, this has been really cool discussion, and I know it's a very, kind of a controversial subject, but I, I hope it's helped some of you Asian guys out there, and I hope, you know, for any of you Asian girls, kind of open your mind as to what's really happening, okay? Um, Isabel, how can our audience find more about you? You guys can check me out at www.isabeldu.com. Um, that has my whole range of work, but then you can also follow me on Instagram, isabeldu. All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, be sure to subscribe. All the information will be in the box, and stay tuned for the next video. How does an Asian American be successful in Hollywood? Because if you didn't know it, not only were you on The Amazing Race, you're going to be on Sci-Fi pretty soon, so you have to check her out. Um, you're working actress and model. She's not a splasterist or you know, waitress. <laughs>